Hi there, it's Jeff here, and uh, today we're going to talk about tax. Well, these are the main sources of government uh, tax revenue in the UK for the fiscal year 2024-25. Income tax climbs above £300 billion a year, with VAT in second place. But the third biggest source of tax revenue for the government is national insurance contributions paid by both employees and also by employers. Corporation tax, council tax and business rates and so on and so forth uh, add significantly. But the three biggest sources of tax revenue are income tax, VAT and national insurance. Now, the tax burden as a whole, if we add together all of the taxes coming into the UK and express as a share of national output, GDP, we can see what's happened in the last, uh, well, the last 25, 30 years in particular. The tax burden has been climbing and the tax measures announced in the October 2024 budget will lift it still further to a record level. In other words, this is the highest tax burden, taxation of around 43% of GDP for over 70 years. And one of the reasons is the increase in national insurance. Now, this is paid by both employees and employers, and it's forecast to bring in £180 billion perhaps in the next year or so. Well, there are two taxes I want to focus on in this video. First of all, I want to talk about fiscal drag, and then we'll focus in on national insurance. Now, fiscal drag happens uh, when inflation and wage growth cause taxpayers to push or be dragged into higher tax brackets and have a higher tax burden without the government actively raising the percentage rate of tax. And that's why sometimes fiscal drag is called a stealth tax. So if, if my wages are going up, if my salary is going up due to inflation, but the tax thresholds, the income at which I start paying tax or pay a higher rate of tax, if those stay the same or don't rise in line with inflation, then people get dragged into paying higher rates of tax. And this is what's called fiscal drag. Now, in the UK, the income tax allowance has been frozen at £12,570 for years and is likely or has been announced in the October 2024 budget will stay at this level again until 2028-29. The higher rate, the rate at which you pay at 40%, well, that threshold again has been fixed and remains at £50,270. Now, the uh, National Institute had done some research and the IFS likewise had the personal tax allowance increased with inflation since 2020, people could earn over £15,300 before they pay tax. But of course, many people are earning more, but now paying income tax at 20%. Indeed, uh, the lowest paid, uh, many basically minimum wage jobs, face an extra direct tax burden of £600 a year due to fiscal drag. So the minimum wage has gone up, and it's going up again in April 2025 to £12.21 per hour for adult workers. But of course, that means people are earning more and therefore paying more in tax. So the impact of the rise in the minimum wage is therefore muted. Now, national insurance. Uh, employer national insurance is effectively a tax on jobs. I mean, it is. OK, it's paid by businesses. So a rise in national insurance is an increase in the cost of employing workers. And uh, the 1.25% increase, which is going to come in in April 2025, means that employers will pay an extra £900 for each employee they take on if they're paid median average earnings, which I think is around £32,000 a year. Well, businesses have options. I mean, this is obviously a tax on businesses. One is to absorb the increase in costs by allowing their profit margins to fall. But many businesses operate on wafer thin operating profit margins. Secondly, of course, they can choose to raise prices for consumers to pass on this higher cost down the supply chain, and that will push up inflation. Or they could attempt to lower their labour costs by either reducing how many people they take on or by cutting jobs or hours or a combination of all of these things. OK, so businesses will have to respond to this. And we, we know that whilst this is going to have a macroeconomic effect, this rise in tax will have a bigger, more significant impact where labour represents a big percentage of total costs. And the good examples there would be would be retail and hospitality, so-called labour intensive parts of the economy. Now, look, let's think about what's going to happen here. In theory, higher employment taxes can lead to rising prices. 
okay, which businesses may choose to do, rise, increase their, their, their costs and increase their prices. That in turn keeps inflation higher, which delays possible interest rate reductions by the Bank of England. It can cause some businesses to reduce hiring and lay off some of their employees, so they're potentially a rise in unemployment. And if businesses are making less profit, that can cut planned capital investment. So all of these three things will be negative for the macro economy. But on the other hand, some of this extra revenue is going to be spent on employing workers in the public sector, directly in supports employment. Over 5 million people work in the state sector. And the UK government, it, they, they say they had a £20 billion black hole inheritance when they came into office. Well, the government needs revenue to cut their borrowing and to cut the national debt. Now, if they're successful in raising sufficient revenue, this might lead to lower long-term interest rates if the yield on bonds goes down and that translates into a lower yield in other financial markets, including things like mortgage rates. So there's, you know, swings and roundabouts here, the benefits and costs. This is a very important issue. This is worth following in the spring of 2025 as this national insurance increase kicks in. Here's a headline from the BBC News this morning. Firms plan job cuts as employment costs rise. Many businesses are having to make tough decisions in the weeks and months ahead about how many people they're going to hire this year and how many people they can afford to keep on. So tax increases, a big story for the UK economy. Fiscal drag and national insurance cover in this video. Thanks for joining in. Stay happy, stay curious, stay positive and see you sometime soon.